I want to give Marina Rodriguez her due. I think that she is uh, very, very talented. She is, uh, it seems like she's learned from her, from her uh, losses. Um, but Mackenzie Dern, man, I mean, she is, it seems like she is turning into the fighter that we thought she could be when she, she made the transition from, from the grappling world. And you look at what she's accomplished as a submission grappler. And now in the UFC, that, that, that wild card that she has in her pocket, but she's not afraid to strike as well. She, she, she throws hard. I think she has a winning mentality. And then she always has that skill of, Hey, if this fight hits the ground, you're in big trouble against Mackenzie Dern. And even this week, you know, when talking about the dominant champ, Valentina Shevchenko, Mackenzie Dern is saying, Hey, maybe it's going to take a, a very, very talented, dangerous submission grappler to end up dethroning this queen at 125 pounds. I don't know if I want to go that far and say that I'm giving Mackenzie Dern a shot to, to, to beat Valentina Shevchenko. We might be getting ahead of ourselves, but she brings up an interesting point. That skill set that she has makes her so dangerous at all times and makes her intriguing to watch. She is the favorite uh, this weekend against Marina Rodriguez, who again has won two in a row, has the height advantage, has the reach advantage. Um, I got to imagine that Mackenzie Dern may be going to be the public side just because, you know, she seems to be like everything's coming together and we're talking about her. Do you like Mackenzie Dern or are you going with the underdog here in Marina Rodriguez? I've been going back and forth a lot on this fight for all the obvious reasons that you just said. You know, we talk about, man, we, we, talk, we talk about someone in Marina who has striking is probably top three in the division. And then we saw the power against Amanda Hebas. We saw the cardio against Michelle Waterson. You know, what impressed me against Amanda Hebas was that she got up and then she finished the fight. And I think it also was a little bit of Amanda Hebas getting a little too confident, having so much success early in her career with her hands, thinking she could box someone like this. For me, you know, I, I'm going to lean towards Mackenzie Dern because I think her ground game is just so elite that I don't think that Marina, once is on her back, will be able to get up at all. Even if she's able to defend submissions, she's not getting up off the ground. We saw it against Carla Esparza, you know, and I just think that right now for McKinsey Durham, where's her striking at is going to be the question, right? She has never fought someone with this striking. She's got a great coach of Jason Perillo. And mm -hmm. for McKenzie Dern to get to the next level to beat Marina here, the striking has to be just somewhat of a threat, just somewhat. That overhand right has to connect one time to ring her bell, get her attention, so then she could shoot in. I'm going to go with Mackenzie Dern to win this one. I just think that there's very few people that we've seen in the sport in general with her level of jujitsu, her grappling in general, her control. And I think her fight IQ is pretty solid. She knows where Marina's great at. You know, I think it's a lot harder to stop someone in the grappling than it is with the striking where you can keep the distance. There are ways to avoid damage. So I'm going to leave Mackenzie Dern here. I know a lot of people are going to probably take the power of Marina and I, and I, and I understand it. But we've seen in fights when someone gets hit from a good striker, they can rely on their grappling. And I think Mackenzie Dern could do that. I'll just make one note here. And you can tell me if you agree with me. I also think sure. that the five rounds actually favors Mackenzie. If, if I was betting this fight, I would feel better about Mackenzie Dern having two extra rounds to potentially get it to the ground. Because I just think that when it gets to the ground, her, her advantage there is so significant that I'm going to, obviously I, I want this fight to hit the ground if I'm betting Mackenzie Dern. And so if you give her an extra 10 minutes to do it, um, I know that there, that's a double-edged sword and we haven't seen Mackenzie Dern in five rounds, uh, Marina Rodriguez, we have, you know, she's, she, this is her second now main event. So I could, this could be proven very, very wrong, but I think Mackenzie has, uh, she had some, some commitment issues in the past. Is she working hard? How's her work ethic? I think all of those are behind her now she's making weight easily. Um, I expect her cardio to be fine in the fourth and fifth rounds. And if you give me 10 extra minutes where she can get her on the ground, because once she gets her on the ground, I think she keep her, keeps her there and potentially finishes her there. So I like the fact it's five rounds for Mackenzie Dern. Are you with me on that? Or, or do you see it differently? No, I, I agree with you. You know, the question is, how was Mackenzie Dern's cardio over five rounds? That's really the only question. If to your point, it's there, then absolutely. Look, when we talk about, we've seen so many fighters steal rounds off a takedown and then position and control on top. She can rely on that at any point. Even though Marina does have good takedown defense, this is still Mackenzie Dern, world-class grappling we're talking about. So yes, if she needs an extra round to steal, if she needs that time to breathe and relax and get the fight to the ground, to your point, yes, that, that does help her very much. I just don't know where her cardio at is in a five round fight. Nobody does. I think she'll be well prepared. I think for all the reasons you said, there's no reason to think otherwise. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.